But preacher, that's Old Testament. I understand it's Old Testament, but it's the same God that you and I serve today. And don't tell me that you and I can sin and get by with it because it won't happen, dear friend. Not at all. Not at all. God said that if they would not follow what he told them, he would reverse all their blessings. He then preserved in, that, uh, in those verses that I've already mentioned the awful things that would happen to the people of God if they refused to follow him. Now listen, when Josiah heard that, look up here, he trembled. He trembled. The Spirit of God that was upon him to serve in the office of being king caused his heart to be pierced. He immediately began to weep and tear his clothes. He put on sackcloth and ashes and called for the people to repent. Josiah took seriously what, that what God said he meant. He knew. He had a lot more sense than a lot of people today that I know, and I'm talking about Christian people. He knew that there were no favorites with God, he knew there were no exception to with God. He realized they were standing on the utter edge of destruction. The problem was they had set the scriptures over in a place where they were no longer being noticed. But listen, the judgment is still progressing. Listen, you can set aside the word of God. You can ignore what the preacher is saying, but you'll not stop the progress of the judgment of God in that way. They were closer to God's judgment because they had lost their standard. They had lost any standard for behavior so they could sit and discuss what they thought was acceptable to God, but it didn't matter what they thought. It was what God had said that was important. Everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes, moving steadfastly toward the utter judgment of God. Just judgment was coming just as sure as God was there, and Josiah wisely understood it. I'm praying there's some Josiahs in this crowd tonight. And listen to what he did. He immediately, he immediately adjusted his life to God. The king called on the spiritual leaders together quickly to bring the people together and to corporately repent. Then he cleaned house of everything that was false. And that's what you and I must begin to do in our individual lives. God listened to Josiah's heart and he sent word to him. Here's what he said. Because thine heart was tender... And thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse. And as rent thy clothes and wept before me, I have heard thee. Therefore, I will gather thee unto the fathers in peace. Thou shalt not see the evil that I will bring. I ask you tonight, what happens when you come up against the word of God? Do you tremble when God speaks? Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, that is the helpless one. And of a contrite spirit, the word there is broken spirit, smitten spirit, a made lame spirit. And trembleth, the word there is fearful, a deep shaking, a desperation at the word of God. Let's take it the third step. 
the fear of God, the fear of sin. Recently, I read this account of a pastor who called another man who was in a position of Christian leadership. The pastor asked him, he said, what's happening in your life? He said, here's his quote, never in my life have I ever been so utterly terrified. For God's reasons alone, God began to deal with sin in my life. God has brought up things that I've not thought about for years and years. He has brought up things from my youth that I never dealt with in my life. Things that have affected my marriage and my Christian assignment. He said God was relentless for three weeks, bringing to mind what he sees as sin and how serious it is with him. He said, I came to the place a few days ago where I cried out to God, Why are you doing this? And God said, because you have lost your fear of me. Principle, principle. When you don't fear God, you will not fear sin. Are you listening? Are you listening? There is a direct relationship between a high view of God and a high view of sin, and conversely, a low view of God and a low view of sin. When there is no fear of God, there is no fear of sin. Now do you see the significance of the word wherein or the question wherein in the book of Malachi? It's amazing to me, friends, to see the number of people who can sin grievously against the word of God. It's just absolutely amazing. Some of the stuff that people are doing, and I'm talking about people now that say they're Christians. I'm talking to people that at least are in church on a Sunday morning. And the stuff they're doing, in the Old Testament, they'd have been put to death for the things they're doing. And in the New Testament, God says it's far more serious than in the Old Testament. We run across people all the time, and I see it, and I just, I cringe. I can't hardly believe it. I mean, I've talked to people at, uh, in uh, Florida, for example. I'm talking about people my age and beyond. That their mates have died, and here's a man and a woman living together, not married. You ask them. I've done it. You ask them. Hey, are you a Christian? Well, yes. Do you know that if you died today, you'd go to heaven? Why, most certainly. My question is, why are you living in sin? How do you think you're going to get away with that? You know their response is this? Well, if we got married, uh, she'd lose her pension. And so we put money over the Word of God. We put money over sin. And think that we're getting by with it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. It's just amazing to me how many people somehow believe that as long as they don't feel something's wrong, or something's bad, well, it's just not wrong. It's not bad because I don't feel it. As long as they can feel okay about it, they can continue to do it. As long as God does not deal with them immediately, it must be okay. Listen to this, friend. You and I are moving closer to an absolute confrontation with the God who makes no exceptions at all, period. Note that the man who was called said, listen to this, the rest of his quote. 